Um, so main features uh, of the Deep Party Scheme Imager. Uh, I will not go into details, it's, it's too boring, but, but just, uh, just briefly explain what are capabilities, right? So <clears throat> uh, the first thing is read sector timeout, and I mentioned that, right? You understand why is that critical. Uh, the next thing is read block size. So basically the imager always has ability for you to set what read block you want to, 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 to use. And it's a common sense, right? If let's say you know that only occasion drive has only occasional single bad sectors, you should not use like read blocks like 1,000 sectors, right? Because it will skip the entire 1,000 sectors. So you will minimize the size of the block. So when you're playing with the read block size, you know the pattern usually that goes for this particular drive, for your particular drive. And then you set that read block. So setting read block size is, is, is quite uh, crucial. Then another thing, variety of implemented types of drive resets. <laughs> DJI has five different types of resets, okay? So uh, some resets are much better, work much better for this particular drive and, and, and not so good for another drive. So every drive is unique, every problem is unique. And uh, uh, you definitely need to have ability to send different types of reset and just on a trial basis. You can just play, okay, let's, let's try to do this reset. And what we are looking for, one reset may process, for instance, for five seconds. So basically, when you are bored in these crazy things, it will, for the drive, take still five seconds to get back in, on track, right? Where another reset may take 10 milliseconds. So that's why it's, it's crucial. And you just play with different resets and see, okay, that one that works best for me, uh, for this particular drive, uh, and, and such you increase in speed and uh, make it safer. And, and generally speaking, speed and safety goes together in data recovery. So the faster you, you can adjust imaging process, the safer it is. It's a, just a general rule. Again, because of these you know, crazy things that is happening behind those resets. Because when we reset, the drive is still struggling and, and, and doing something, right? And, and still to, to, to get back in line. <clears throat> so, so safety and speed always go together. This, the more control, the more things you, you, you can play with, while you're targeting data, the better because you can adjust all those things to make it smoothly and fast. <clears throat> Variety of supported read commands and protocol modes. This is really so, uh, like system software has just one read command and that's it, okay? While according to ATA specification, you may find at least five or six, so maybe more commands that are reading the same block of sectors. So again, the professional data recovery tool should give you that ability to adjust. Okay, why don't we try with this read command? Maybe it will work better, right? So it's all about uh, capabilities to, to turn things, <coughs> to tune up things. Pre-configure the drive for light operation by disabling non-critical subsystem. That's something also the DDI does. It, it just, it, it is called like pre-configure the drive, and that's it. So drive pre-configuration. It does lots of different things, uh, but the most critical is disabling smart attributes, for example. Because think about all these non-critical subsystems, when you're imaging the drive, they still, they still work, right? As soon as the drive hits bad sector, it has to go to smart attributes and, 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 and increment some, some counters or put some logs. And so what we are trying, we're trying to do uh, to find all vendor-specific ways of turning, so disabling everything that we can disable, right? Because we are creating the light environment for the drive. Again, it's about safety and speed at the end of all. <clears throat> it's definitely multi-pass imaging because, uh, as I said, it's targeting good areas first and only then get back to bad areas. So it has a map of every single read sector. If sector was read properly, it marked it in, in, in the map that it was read properly and it will never try to read the sector again. It now will only use image if we need that. So basically how it works, it only read one time, any sector, only single time. If it fails, it may skip it for now, but if we need, we can get back. But at any time, if it was able to read this sector, it copy it to the image and it mark it in the map that now this sector was read properly, okay? <clears throat> Testing imaging by specific read write heads. So DDI has the ability to actually show you where each particular sector is located. 
Okay, so how many drive, ha how many has the drive has, and where each sector is located. And uh, this, uh, first of all, it gives you um, a functionality to test heads, to test read write heads. So if you have an unstable drive, you connect it to DDI, and it may just test every single head, and you will see, okay, head number two is weak or problematic, right? Or maybe even failed at all. And then you can still image only good heads first. The same idea. So we are only retrieving all the good areas first, like only good, only only from good heads, and then we can get back to that problematic head and and then dig into uh, if necessary. Okay. So that uh, that uh, so again, it's like kind of um, you are getting more and more things to tune up when you are working with the actual device, actual physical device, right? <clears throat> Uh, image by specific files, as I said, so you can, if this is a really bad shape drive, you may not, uh, uh, it may not survive for you to image the entire drive. For those drives, you may need to image only metadata first, uh, you know, see the file tree, search for particular files, and image only those files. In some cases, that it's the only option you have. Okay, if drive is really in a bad shape and every single sector takes a long time, then there is no need to image the entire drive. <clears throat> uh, User-defined imaging algorithm, uh, it has lots of customizable uh, things uh, when uh, you can, it's not scripting, but it's like scripting. You have if then action. You say, if you get sector with that error, uh, uh, do this. You know, jump over one millisecond, or, or do this, or reset the drive. And, and this gives you flexibility, because when you see that particular drive, you will notice some kind of pattern. Okay, if this happens, then you, you know that after that, something bad happens. And then you can customize this algorithm to say, if this happened, like reset or skip or, or do or repower the drive. Okay, so this is very, very easily customizable. <clears throat> uh, data recovery support for drive with different physical sector sizes. Uh, you know, this is one, one kilobyte sector size, four kilobyte sector size, all those drives. They have different sector size, and DJI is optimized to handle uh, this uh, in a proper way. Real-time data validation, this is uh, the thing that shows you, uh, this is pretty much the same counters and hex data as I showed you before for uh, rapid drive tester, right? So during the imaging, you see what you're imaging. It's not like you are blind, you, you run the image, cross your fingers, wait like for two weeks <laughs> until the image is done, and take the image and see there is no data, right? <coughs> so in DJI, as soon as you start imaging, you see right away what type of data you are imaging and, then, and that you are doing the right thing, okay? That you are actually receiving data. <clears throat> and verifies integrity of recovered files based on corrupted sec uh, sectors. That's uh, like from business perspective, it's one of the crucial things, right? And I mentioned that earlier. If you, even if you recovered like thousands of files and you don't have ability to verify integrity of files, you have that you know, problem with your client, okay? Because you're not sure how to handle this, like whether you actually need to open up every single file to verify, or you can sit with your client and verify every, every, every file. That's, it could be a time consuming process, but most importantly, uh, it's, it creates uh, kind of, it doesn't create the trust, right? The trust between you and your client. Because you're telling, okay, yeah, I recovered file, but I'm not sure maybe they're corrupted. It's, it's like, you know, uh, so with DJI, uh, it can give you report. It can tell you exactly, uh, based on bad sectors, which, which file is affected, which not. And you can actually save only integral files. So you can search for files, and only, for instance, you say, okay, I want pictures, and only uh, integral pictures, only those files that are not corrupted. And it will save you only those files. And then, well, there's still maybe 1% chances that something is corrupted due to logical corruption. But based on my experience, it's like over 99% chances that whatever, whatever report is, it is an actual status of files. And that helps a lot in, from bu business communication perspective, right? Not only uh, from technical perspective.